Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you again tonight for this fellowship which as always is unto you. We seek your presence. We seek your counsel. We seek the wisdom that is from above. We seek, Lord, the engrafted word which is able to save souls. And so, Father, Lord, God Almighty, we ask that you lead us and guide us tonight along the paths of righteousness, along the paths of life, along that path that only leads to you, that narrow path that leads to you. For you, O oh God, are our promised land. You are our portion. Thank you, Almighty Father. Our prayer is that in everything, as always, your name and your name alone may be glorified in our discussions, in our thoughts, in our words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Good evening. Are you still are you still um one hour behind in uh, in London or you have you have switched to to the correct time? Good, good evening. Um we've since March we've gone back to it's not daylight saving, but yeah, we've we've come back to every the normal time. Yeah, yeah, we are in seven thirty now. Yes, 7.30. Okay, thank God. We've been here since <clears throat> 7. Because we weren't sure whether Monday was also uh, changed. But according to Mr. Adeliki, Sister Uche, she and someone else came and left as well. To me, it wasn't clear. Okay, some people came and left. Mr. Adeliki. Yes, uh, Sister Uche, she and... Uh... And uh, the other, what's her name now? Uh, it's been a, a while that she came here. I can't remember her name again. Uh, okay, they are not aware of it, the change. Did you tell other, me, me, well, they, I, when I, I was greeting mm -hmm. them, but they didn't respond. So after a while, they now, they now left. But I think okay. they will come back here. Mm. No problem. Today, I want us to look again, are the relationship between men and women uh, or the differences, let's may put it this way, between men and women relying sometimes on empiricisms and uh, more fundamental, fundamentally what we have been able to discern from the scriptures. Okay, so I want to start with questions that pertain uh, to healing wings. Uh, let me let me start with Dr. Why do more women come for prayer meetings in healing wings than for midweek services? Uh, a lot of my questions are based on generalizations. Generalizations, are, I always find them to be useful because they are generalizations, because they are generally correct. Mm. Okay. Well, I, I, when, I, when I look at it, I generally, I feel that because women are, women are more in tune when it comes to praying, when it comes to gathering, praying, you know, they yeah, are you're more... Making, you're not telling me the reason. I'm not um, interested in just in okay. just the statements. My question okay. is trying to go beyond the statements. Okay, maybe I I, I think that uh, okay. One of the reason I think is this: the the women of healing wings, they I think they are more familiar with the prayer section than the uh, the, than the Bible section. How can doing. you say that the prayer sessions have been in existence long, much longer than the prayer sessions? Yes, the prayer but session when you look at it, the, the, the other one is 
it's nearly 30 years old. So what? Yes, when you look at the prayer, even the, even even as long, even the VG that we normally have, have that time, if you look at it, you see that women are always more than men. It's only the the midweek this midweek service that men are we have a lot of men at that time. You know, that's what I observe. You know, so I I, I just feel that you have, you have still not answered <laughs> the question. Okay. So too, it's, it's difficult to, to get you to change your focus at all. The question wants to know the reason why, not to, not to just state this, to repeat mm. the statement. And you can even challenge the statement, the general generalization that I made in your answer. Why? Why do why are they more amenable to the prayer meeting than to the meetings that are more discussive. Well, I, let me let me let me think about it, sir. Okay, yeah, Missy, can you help us in this? Without being controversial, no, I I can't help you. <laughs> what do you mean without being controversial? <laughs> A lot, I, of I my question, I, I, a lot of my questions are, uh, tonight are controversial questions. That's exactly the again. point. That is it. You, you, I was going, that's why. So, so if I can speak freely. Um, I speak freely. <laughs> Amara is already smiling. <laughs> speak freely. Amara is already what? Smiling like, uh oh. Okay. So I, I think she's smiling in my mouth. I'm still coming to her. I'm smiling there. <laughs> so I think... Mr. Dileke has a point, which is that sort of, you know how there is already a format before we, I mean, Healing Wings is not the first church that anybody here has been to. So there is a kind of understanding that there's a comfort zone in this, in, in, in saying prayers. This is something that it feels almost as if women have already been um, socialized into um, a, a doing. But healing wings, so like, but the socialization cannot be coming from you. It's not you. It's not you. Is it coming uh -huh, from so healing wings? No, before okay. healing before wings. even they come here. Okay. Yes, All right. before healing wings. So, for example, when I was first married, it was expected that I would be the more prayerful partner because I was a woman. So I think that already that expectation is part of how you would say Nigerian culture. I don't know. Who expected uh, this view? Ah, lots of people know. Um, and then also the way that I prayed, I was I was told that I I wasn't praying, I, I didn't pray out. I should be praying out. And and I think that's I think it was the rebellion against that that even made me now less inclined, which is what you are picking up, where I, I went the opposite to most women, which is excuse me, what has my what is your business with what I'm praying? That's witchcraft, but also why do I have to pray in a particular way? And what is my what is your business with you know how which are you God am I praying to you anyway so but I think that um you know because a lot of the women that I know in marriages they're the ones that have that more you know there's a there's a way that we pray in Nigeria they have that they have more of that thing um <laughs> what thing <laughs> why are you laughing I didn't say anything though know? okay so but apart from that, that they have eh? more of that. okay eh? you say they have more of that thing i'm wondering what is the thing that they have ah uh, that's you know prayer warrior warriorness <laughs> warrior yeah, there's, a, there's a thing where you have to be a prayer warrior there's a voice there's a but, but, there's is, a... It, but is this scripturally true because in the scriptures the major prayers are they prayed by men or are they prayed by women? That's a good question. I have to go and check. I'm, I, it's not something that are really tabulated because really women's voices are not as much as men. So how does one tell? Um, <laughs> women's voices are quite, quite, quite much in the scriptures, as we might discover tonight. Hopefully. Okay, let me ask. Uh, the, the, I haven't finished now. Okay, you haven't finished. All right. Yeah. So uh, my other, my other, 
speculation in quote is that um you get you dr femi gets taken used to uh, because your your questioning can be quite intense which i suspect is why you will find more of these people that live abroad the women coming because they're already used to that sort of um expectation that you are to use your voice and they've they've used it more so where the challenge comes and there's like yes i want to know your opinion and all that uh i think so, so they, nigerian women are silent that's what you're saying they we're are not, not allowed no we're not yeah. encouraged to, speak. to use our voices in the way that you are asking so um that's what i think anyway where does the discouragement come in nigeria It comes from all kinds of. It comes from your family. It can only come from women. Oh, yeah, go on. It comes from your original family. I mean, I've heard it from my own original family that your voice is very strong. You know, <laughs> very strong voice. Is that was that from your mother or from your father? Um, I think it was from both of them. So I know why you're asking the question, but it really was from both of them. Um, and the, because I think that most most of these uh, most of these foundations are laid by women, by mothers. I think I think your brother was had a little bit of she had more than a bit to do with it. He had certain expectations, so he 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 used to pass comments that I had to be more ladylike. I wasn't ladylike enough. I didn't walk ladylike enough. I did so. All of those insinuations were voiced. So if I was sitting in if I was sitting in a room, so which was part of why you were accused, if you remember, that you had encouraged me to be too vocal and that you were the that you were a major problem in my adult life because I I, I was using this voice that you had encouraged me to use. Whereas if you had not come to live in our house, then I would be more like a typical Nigerian. You heard this accusation. How long from did I live in your house? How long was it? <laughs> was it up to one year? Amara, it's funny, Abby. I was. <laughs> so, I, I didn't uh, live that long in your house. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm just. Um, I finished talking now, so I'll pass it to Amara. Abby. <laughs> Yes, Amara, I'm, I'm, uh, the women prefer to pray than to engage in discussions of our scripture. Good evening. I'm, I'm not I'm not sure. It's hard to say. Which one does Amara prefer? I prefer uh, this one, but I think that's just because I, um, I sometimes find it difficult to stay awake. I didn't hear. Which one did you say you prefer? I prefer the mid midweek ones because that's just because I find it difficult to stay awake. <laughs> okay. We all find it difficult to stay awake. <laughs> that's a problem. But, they, but in any case, you are you're always one of the first people there. Well, all the same. Uh, Festos, good evening. Good evening, sir. Yes, you know, I mean, the, the, one of the peculiarities of Healing Wings that I've noticed, and I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, I hope it is not, a, it was a peculiarity that I noticed a long time ago, and I'm wondering if it still exists, because there's, there, there tend to be more men in Healing Wings than women which is a little bit unusual for fellowships or churches. Most churches, there are more women than men. I wonder why that is the case. And then this, the other question is, why more women come for prayer meetings and not for midweek services? Oh, okay, I... I, I... 
you know that I also ask that um, always ask that because um it's very difficult for my wife to come for a, a normal Bible study or practical Christianity. You know, like she's not around though, you know, like she doesn't know the days. But she prefer she can have series of prayer meetings. You know, sometimes she starts from 9, 10, 11, 12. Right, different different series of, series of prayers. But for discussion, he's a bit reluctant. I don't know. I feel that maybe they feel that uh, um, the area of prayer is more that it's, it's very vital and stronger to them more than coming to a Christian, um, particular Christianity or Bible study to discuss. Or um, some of them don't just want to argue, don't just want to know more um, about scriptures. They just want to stay where they are. And those are the things, the two things that I think about. I think more that they prefer prayers. They are making more better than having a discussion. Have anything? Let me ask this facetiously. Does it have anything to do with Paul's injunction that women should be silent? No. Uh... Are women naturally more silent in churches? Men are not silent. Though. They are not. The yes, there is. Um, some 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 church rules that now indicate that women should not be saying things. Or if you look at it, it's not in all churches. Um, yes, it's not in all churches. So in the in other churches, it's very difficult. In where I'm coming from, even though my my mom has an opinion, she will have to go and tell her husband. So the husband will not bring the opinion. <laughs> <to> the <church. laughs> she can, you can't stand up and voice out. You want to voice out, it's either they suspend the husband and both of them. And the husband now will not be saying that you are the one that caused the trouble. Yes. <laughs> so they are, they are scared. But in this new generation, I'm not sure. They are silent. They are, they, they, Mr. They Adeliki, mm -hmm. your yes, hand sir. is up. Yeah. 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 The, the, the first uh, uh, reason that first came to my mind was uh, because of the foundation, long years of foundation. Long years of foundation. You know I mean, to those days, churches, women, does, women does, they don't talk in churches. They don't, it's only men that are. are they are pastors. It is just presently, recently that women start becoming pastors. It is men. And for it is even when you have a pastor and a wife, the wife doesn't really talk. In redeem, if we look at redeem, before you see the, the, the wife of a pastor talk, it must be that they must have grown to one level that I cannot be, you know, like the Louis Omadis, those ones, you, there's no way you can cover the, those ones at, at the top. But if you go to other smaller regimes, it's very difficult to even know their wives, the pastor's wife. So those foundations have been there. So if we look at Healing Wings too, the churches are coming from, okay, for instance, my wife, for instance, when I, uh, she preferred vigil. Even the, the, the midweek service, sometimes I call her and say, ah, this, your questions are, are, are difficult to, sometimes she will know, ah, she doesn't want to go and answer something that ah, at the end of the day, Maybe you latch her or something. I said, no, it's not like that. You are, you are learning now. Somebody else is learning how to, you know, you understand. So I think either she's not confident enough in what she knows to be corrected or there's a fear. I don't, I don't you understand. That is just from the healing wings aspect I, that I can see. Because if, I, if we look at healing wings itself, you see a lot of women doesn't come for midweek service. And when they come for, if they, they, only the ones, those ones that have been coming, those are the ones that you see them coming in, you know? So that's just what I wanted to have. Okay, thank you. Amara, you know, I mean, some of these, some of the questions I'm going to ask 
uh, uh, generalizations. Uh, are women generally, in your perspective, more prayerful than men? If I have to guess, I'd, I'd say yes. Um, Why would that be the case? Is it that men are too busy? Men are not that interested in God? And women are more interested in spiritual matters? Um, I think maybe women find themselves in in certain situations that uh, men w would not, and um, they often need help. I, I, I don't know how to say it, but uh, I guess uh, if you are someone who needs help often, you, you pray, you pray more. Have you noticed that in the scriptures, the great faiths tend to be displayed by women? Have you, have you, you know, you can contest it. Um, I, I wouldn't have, have thought particularly that the Great. Okay, well, let, let's 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 look. You know, we can go, let, let's start with the, with the New Testament, for instance, in the ministry of women, in the ministry of Jesus. Uh, he 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 commended more women with their faith than men. Okay, um, you know the Samaritan woman that he went by the well immediately received the scriptures. The Syrophoenician woman, who you call the dog, great is your faith. The woman with the issue of blood exercised great faith. In the Old Testament, the, the woman whose child died, uh, she carried the child and they said, you know, it is well, it is well, and went and, and brought, went to the prophet. I mean, there's quite a few examples of this. There are not that many examples of men with great faith, apart from um, maybe the the centurion. Yeah, now that you mentioned it, yeah. Okay, let, let me ask your mom. Uh, let me see. Sir. Have you noticed that in the scriptures, women seem to exercise greater faith than men? No, I haven't. Uh, are women more prayerful than men, generally? In the, in the Bible, or generally in real life? Yeah, yeah, generally. But in real life, sorry. Sorry. I didn't, I didn't hear you, sorry. Generally. Um, I'm just. I wonder if it's if it's if it's if you can tell, you know, because there's. I find that there's a lot of public praying, but there's also a lot of must be a lot of private praying. So, how do you determine if yeah, somebody's yeah, actually prayerful? For, for instance, for instance, let us just let us just take, you know, our morning prayers. The more women seem to attend. But for example, if you put me with the men in healing wings and you ask whether I was prayerful, they would probably say I wasn't. Because no, I, no, I they don't. They, they wouldn't say that because you you come for the you come for the. Yeah, but I've, I've never the, taken the prayer before, and I'm I'm not. So they would say, you know, as compared to the women, as all, all the other women. Yes, but you know, don't let me keep repeating this in this discussion. I'm I'm not talking about 
you. I'm making general statements. Okay. Um. Well, I think it's a difficult question. It's a difficult, like, for me, it's interesting that Mr. Feston says, oh, my wife prays, she does back to back to back, which for me is just incredible because I don't think that I, I have, um, <clears throat> that that is my, that is my, you know, so I, I don't know what people do in their private lives. So it's, you know, if, if, if one were to use public praying, uh, I'm not, I'm not sure. Have you ever heard of a book? What happens when men pray? No, I haven't. By, by what, about what happens when women pray? No, I did the same author. There is, a, there, is a, there is a famous book. What happens when women pray? I've never heard of a book oh, that it, says what, that ha me? what happens when, when men pray. <laughs> <laughs> I what? mean, you know. Um, is, it, is that the Stop Me Your Martian book? No? Yes. No. Yeah. Yes. You know, I mean, so wh why is the emphasis on what happens when women pray rather than, you know, and you, you, you did mention earlier on that it was expected of you to be the more prayerful person in your home than your husband. Mm. Yeah, interesting. Because the, the, the inclination to pray uh more emotional than practical. Not for me. Not, not for me. Um, so sorry, because now I brought it back to myself, but uh, uh would a, a more emotional person be more inclined to pray than a, somebody who is less emotional? I wonder because how how can you keep up because I've from a, from I'm thinking just so this is a general thing where it is it, it makes your brain is on all day but your emotions if 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 you were using your emotions twenty four hours you would be exhausted but it it's something that you could probably do to be praying in your mind for long stretches which I imagine is what people do but I don't know so. Um, Praying as an emotional exercise just feels like something that you cannot carry on for very, very long periods of time. It, it just no, I'm not as an emotional exercise, as the emotional engine. What what propels people to pray? The catalyst. Their emotions. So, for example, the, the prayer that you used as an example, which was Benedict's prayer yesterday, which I was, which I was awake for. And which went by very quickly was not more was wasn't really about emotions. It was it just felt very spirit led. So it, it how didn't much go of... back very quickly. But anyway, go on. <laughs> that was a, that's the longest morning prayer we ever had. No, but that's what I'm saying because I was in it. It, it felt it, it it felt I was carried along, so it felt that it happened very quickly. But sometimes it feels very extended depending on who is or who is praying. Um. And I yes, I mean, that, 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 that's true. Some so there are some prayers that I practically withdraw from, even though I'm here, but I'm really not, you know, I'm, inside I'm, it. Yeah, yeah. Then there are some prayers that engage you, draw you in, and you are just, you know, uh, and it, it, of course, this is not the first time that Benedict, you know, Benedict is praying. So, this, but it, there was something very significant about the, the way that he was praying. I'm, I'm not really sure what was going on in the background of his life yesterday yes. or the day before, but there was something about yesterday's prayer that did stand out. And I don't think that it was so much an emotional thing as much as there was just, it felt like there was just a higher quotient of the spirit inside the the the, the prayer. So. Okay. Uh, Samukwa, good evening. Good evening, doctor. Good evening, church. Yes, we are we are looking at today at the differences between men and women, and a lot of the time it's it's going to be empirical because sometimes we relate it to scripture. Okay, and here we're talking about um, about prayer. Say so, you know, um, are women more prayerful than men? 
It would seem so. Why would it seem so? And if it seems so, why? It would seem so because um, many times in the when you find uh, in, in, when you find a number of uh, church gatherings, meetings, you know, planned sometimes um, uh, prayer meetings and so on, it's usually more highly attended by women than men. That's one. And um, secondly, um, <laughs> the, the I, I think like when you mentioned the issue of emotion, I, I get the feeling that women are more emotional than men. And that could be a driving force, the emotion. That isn't to say that um, um, that isn't to say that they may not they may not have other reasons for the prayers. But um, these seem seem to be the tendencies that I uh, found. On the other hand, men, I think that speaking generally and uh, I stand to be corrected. So, uh, I, I, I think that sometimes or often men allow themselves to get overwhelmed with the, with the issues of getting along in, in life and, uh, you know, prof uh, and uh, about living the cares up of this world. Yes, living up to their responsibilities as um, the head of the home and all that. So sometimes they might get overwhelmed by that, and and it is it is uh, off. It's not it's not surprising to find that they often will remember prayer, earnest prayer, when they are in trouble. You know, but um, I, there could also be a, um, there could also be a reason like what I want to tell you now because. But that may not be a common thing. So, for example, um, I once had cause to try and define what prayer is when I was discussing with a friend. And um, we came to the conclusion that prayer is the heart's condition towards God, which means that your heart can be in tune with God regardless of your location all the time. And um, like Yemisi mentioned, it is, uh, I think it is, it is possible for some people to just in their minds be, be in communion with God, you know, and it's not, an, it's not a formal act of, okay, I want to take this time out to pray and, you know, go into a quiet corner and all that. But, you know, the mind is in... Yeah, I know. Obviously, then that cannot apply to my question because there is no way we can determine that. So my that's why I say it's empirical. My my question can only can only address things that you can see. Obviously, we cannot tell who is praying while he's walking down the road. But of empirically, course. empirically are things that are observable. But empirically, it is uh, it it like I said, it would seem that women are more uh, prayerful than men from what we see. And why is that the case empirically, if, if you have not already answered the question? Why is that? Yes. Why Why do women tend to pray more <laughs> I don't want to get men? into trouble. I don't want to get into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, are, we, are, we are all going to get into trouble tonight because I'm going to ask you some very troublesome questions. So uh, there is no, you know, I mean, why are well, you so I concerned think, about public opinion? That is not part of, it's not part of our I, ministry. I think that um, for to be able to answer that, one might need to 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 understand what constitutes the subject of women's prayers most of the time. <laughs> No, that's a different issue. Whatever the because subject. that in itself, 
Well, that, that's irrelevant. They might, you, you know, the issue question is not about what they are praying about or the value of their prayer. You know, I mean, somebody can pray for one hour and uh, and it's hitting the ceiling. Somebody can pray for five minutes and the heaven is open. That's not the issue. I know, but the issue is that the 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 the, the, the propensity to pray can be motivated by the reason for the prayer. Yes, yeah, so what does that mean? That that women have a half propensity to fail in, in prayer? No. That can be they, that can be the case. No, that like I said, it depends on what are, what are they praying about. What okay, I, right. no, but, but you are well, still we are still going back to questions that are not answered by empirical in what are they praying about? It's irrelevant well, in that's this. What that's, that's some, 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 some. Don't let me keep making the same giving you the same guidelines. Otherwise, we are going to waste too much time. Don't go back to the same thing. We are only dealing with what are observable. Let's deal with what we can observe. So we cannot tell what they are praying about, or we cannot tell if their prayer has been answered or not answered. You know, that's that's not, not, not up to us. But we, we can tell who has an observable tendency in one direction or the other. And I'm going to and I'm, I'm going to present the questions. All of them are going to be like that. So I don't want to keep going back to, you know, let's, let's just face certain guidelines. Yes, let me see. Okay. Um, I wanted to, Mr. Okwa, I, I just wanted to ask him a question because when he was talking, something hit a nose and I thought, mm, this is where he's going with this. So we're talking about the empirical things, right? Is it, yeah. is it, for example, the case that women are praying about men, which... If he said, I would probably say, oh, okay. And be because women, of course, are more relational uh, and we're praying about husbands and praying about boyfriends and praying yeah, about... But, but men may be praying about their jobs, about success in business, about, you know... Um, I don't know. I, that, that doesn't somehow feel right. I think it feels... It, it somehow feels right that women are praying about their relationships and especially about their relationships with men. And that pushes up the questions of women who are in fact praying. Okay, you know that 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 does. But a I'm lot. asking Mr. Okwa. I don't know whether that's what he was thinking. No, 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 no. That 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 does a lot. In fact, in in terms of providing some understanding for my question, okay, which which that which didn't occur to me before. So it's possible that because they are more concerned about relationships because uh, they are more bound by time in terms of some of these relationships. They have a biological clock and all that. So there is a higher tendency to be praying about those relationships. Okay. I, 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 where my mind was going was, yeah, well, this could, have, could be a part of it. However, I was thinking more in terms of the fact that, you know, what women pray about, the end is the end, the end of it all is about, you know, um, what's the word? What's the word? It, um, well, for lack of a better expression, you know, for for well-being in their circumstances. For example, women will pray about children. Women will pray about their homes, you know, and like, uh, so where, so from uh, Yemishi's standpoint, that what she said, you know, comes into that umbrella of, you know, uh, uh, seeking well-being, you know, in, no, no, in no, their no. I mean, okay, so, so if, if you're taking it in that, like, I mean, let me tell you this, okay, in my position, okay, as a fellowship coordinator, all right, you know, uh, um, men hardly come to ask you to pray for them to get a wife, okay, whereas women, you know, I mean, we can even if we can even tell it from from uh, morning prayers here. Women pray for getting a husband, so they are they they they. You know, I don't know whether men just feel that they can always get a wife. I don't know, um, but um, women pray for their soulmates. Uh, um, let let me go to um. Okay, the person I want to go to has disappeared. Um. Okay, um, Barnabas. Barnabas. Yes, sir. Good evening. 
good evening. We are talking. We we are talking today about relationship between men and women. So I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you a question, and I I'm going to tell you beforehand mm, that uh, be spiritual about it. Okay. You know, we're we 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 we're trying to determine if and why women may be more prayerful than men. Okay. Now, could it be that it's because women are weaker than men? I would say, <clears throat> I would say, you yes. understand the question to start with. Yes. Do you accept that women are weaker than men? I don't, but I think the 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 society presents it so. Hold on, hold on. So <laughs> that's why I say you have to be a little bit more spiritual in some of these questions. Is it good to be weak or to be strong? It's good to be weak. Okay, I'm still. Do you still maintain the position that women are not weaker than men? That's why I prefaced it. I say when I'm asking you this question, don't be can out with it. Huh? So let me put you on the spot. When I immediately asked you, you saw weakness uh, as negative. Whereas it really, it is the weak that pray. Okay. Yes. You know because because we know that I mean, uh, 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 part of my pro I I didn't pray for forty one years. Okay, and when I when I look back and try to understand it, why I was so foolish, it was because I felt I was strong. You understand? I had a lot of self-confidence. And, you know, I mean, um, some years ago, I, I wrote on my on my Twitter page that the more I work with God, the more incompetent I become. And people blasted me, like, what kind of God is yours? What kind of God is yours? You know, and, <laughs> and I was actually stating uh, a scriptural position. Okay? Because we can only relate to God if we are poor and needy. Now, back to my question. Are women more prayerful because they are weaker than men? Or, they, or that, that, you know, men are less prayerful because they feel they are stronger? Yes, so... <clears throat> I'm trying to situate my answer, trying to do a comparison between probably maybe myself and my wife or myself and the female folks I have around, right? And I think men, and in this case, I'm saying so myself, right? We are less prayerful because a lot of the time we think we can sort the problem out ourselves. We think and, we are problem solvers. Yes. So we think... We and women don't think they are problem solvers. Yes. So, so um, I'm really struggling with words, but I think the way we perceive our ability to solve problems, right, is different from the way women uh, look at their own ability to solve problems. We are so masculine in a lot of things. We feel like our muscles and our money can do it, or our our, our <laughs> logic can do it. But a lot of the time, we are seeing it as okay. What does it take? How much does it cost? Okay, what can I? Who can I call? What can I move? What can I do? So, and that's probably the reason why prayer doesn't come first a lot of the time when men are faced with a challenge but i think okay you, you, you know you know you know you know uh, the, the, 
the problem with this question posed to you. You are you 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 are a JJC. You know what JJC is? You are a Johnny Just Club. You are Johnny Just Club in marriage. You have, you have, and yes. I'm not even sure yes. if you have celebrated your first anniversary yet. Have you celebrated the first anniversary? Not yet. Not not yet. Okay. So you you know, but um, you you, you find that a lot of problems in a home are directed at the man. And so he is challenged to be a problem solver. I think it was Sam that was talking to us and said, you know, uh, if there is uh, something wrong with the plumbing, who's going to get the plumber? If there is something wrong with the electricity, who's going to change? Who's going to get the electrician? Who's going to change the light bulb? So, you know, I mean, the problems are, okay, presented to men. And so, and so some, somehow we, are... we yeah, go on. I think they are they are so because there is a general perception that the man is stronger, the man can do it, right? And does that militate uh, against prayerfulness? Well, it's not supposed to, in, but in, I in, think in practically it does. I think practically it does because uh so a lot of the time, for example, the plumbing issue you, you the example you gave now, right? If there's a plumbing issue in the house, rarely will you see the man saying, okay, let me go to God in prayer trying to solve the plumbing issue. Right? <laughs> yeah. But but the man should pray first before getting the plumber. <laughs> yes. So that, that that's why I said that's why I said uh ideally, right? We should not, but practically, a lot of men we don't do that. In fact, in most cases, when there is a shortage of gas, plumbing issue, the first thing probably that the man is thinking of is how much money he has in his account. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm how money much, Yeah. Um, okay, if he doesn't have money, okay, what cause or what business or what connection he's going to make to make sure that this thing is sorted out. So, but you could find situations where maybe if the man is taken out, right and the woman is faced with a similar challenge so i don't know if it is a perception of weakness or whatever but she is more likely uh inclined to seek the face of god or some spiritual yeah, it's, it's not wants. just that if you take the man out of the equation okay let's say it's a married couple and then the man has to go abroad for one year. We we'll do a course or something. The woman is going to take up all those responsibilities. <laughs> okay, but as long as the man is home, uh, it's easily deflected on the man. And uh, uh, and and the, 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 the part of the point of this discussion is to to you know I mean I, I think what the Holy Spirit wants us to know is that. Even though you are one required to do A or B, please, please, please <laughs> present it to God first. I don't change the light bulb without asking God for help. <laughs> you know, I've, I've yeah, learned so, that. So I, I, <laughs> I'm know? sure I'm sure you do that because because of the level of understanding that you have, right? So there is this question I asked uh, a, a long time ago, right? And I was pretty much young, so a pastor wife died and we were to go for the funeral service and everybody comes up to speak and they are just telling the man to be a man <laughs> right? <laughs> but I know that I have seen even in movies and in, in real life where a woman's husband is dead right and people are coming to tell her that don't worry the Lord is with you yes. the Lord will see but the so, man they are telling him to be a man. Exactly. So in fact, people are trying to stop the man from crying because they expect him to be a man. Yeah. So subconsciously, a young boy is growing up, and I'm seeing that I am believing that okay, when I grow up, I'm supposed to take care of things. So a lot of the time, without the understanding that we have today, I am very sure that most of us, right, would want to look for solutions. So maybe it is when we, we are not able to do it that we will not start thinking of it here. 
maybe I should talk to God about it or something. But I think the girl child, right from when the mother is training her, right? There is this unconscious way of trying to make you feel like, okay, no, you always have God, you always. So I don't know. <laughs> but personally, I feel like the woman is really stronger because their own strength is not what we see physically, right? There are areas, that's why I say we might, I don't know, but I don't think women are weaker, but because the society makes no, it but so the, but the, scriptures, the, the scripture says they are the weaker vessel. I mean, I, I think we discussed that some weeks back. What does it mean and all that? Okay, I, I don't want to really to get that again. But, you know, um, I, I, and, and um, sometimes people react to that uh, 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 as if it's pejorative. Whereas I think weakness is a strength, <laughs> scripturally. Okay, and sometimes I find that some of these some of these myths are perpetuated by women themselves. Okay, for instance, I tend to cry a lot. I mean, you know, the Holy Spirit makes me cry a lot, and um, I get more reactions. You know, curious reactions about this from more from women than from men that have sort of. Uh, wondered why you are crying or you should not be crying and and from from youth we we if a boy is crying they would have a problem with him crying but with the girl is crying there's not much you know i mean i understood that uh, women can cry but a man uh, this you are a man now what is your problem <laughs> yes let me see Yeah, I recognize it. I recognize it, it, a very distinct disadvantage for men. Um, when we lived in Calabar, they used to call my ex the man who <laughs> the man who runs things. <laughs> I didn't think it was a good. I didn't think it was a good title for him <laughs> because really that title belongs to God, you know. So, but if you if you if if you feel if you take it on board and say, yeah, I'm the guy who runs things around here, then yeah. um you you know you you're at a disadvantage without really knowing it. But something else that, that occurred to me when um um Barnabas was speaking was that um you, I mean from when kids are young, you can tell the difference in volubility where the girls can just be the girls can talk 24 hours maybe the, the the boy says a few words and that distinction remains so if i call my my if i call my sister in bishop stortford and i'm on the phone <laughs> her husband will just keep coming in and saying do you mean that you're still on the phone but you are saying the same thing over and over i'm like <laughs> Please excuse us now. And for him, there is that surprise that we, we we can be um we can be discussing the same thing over and over and over. We can do it for an hour or two hours. And he says that once he we're talking too much that his ears start to hurt him. <laughs> so and I know that he's not making that up, he's actually saying something, which is that men have less tolerance for um for, for talking over and over and over and saying the same thing. And perhaps that also informs the ability to, to pray because when you're praying, you have to be, you are talking, right? You're saying, you 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 know, you are, you're saying words. So. Um, yeah, but your, 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 your prayer is not determined by the length of the prayer, well, but by the depth of the prayer. Mm. Yes, uh, uh, Benedict Alibi. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening, good evening, church. We we discussed you earlier on, but I don't know whether you were around then. You say, "Well, what happened to you yesterday? Why? Why? Or is it yesterday? Okay, this morning. There this was morning. something. Uh, what was it that that? What was the inspiration about? <laughs> I I can't explain, more. but I just um find myself because sometimes because I don't prepare for VG. I only just ask Holy Spirit to take over. And sometimes it's like that. Yesterday was different because 
I I trust in different levels. So I don't know why God. Well, you know, you know, you know I, I, I was thinking about it, and I discovered that a lot of the time, I don't give you enough time for the morning prayers. Yes. There's one person that I know that I can call you and say, can you lead the prayer today? And you say yes. Can you lead the prayer tomorrow? And you say yes. But this, this one of yesterday, you had like one week. Yes, yes. I don't know whether that well, made a difference, even, but I even, noticed that. I, even me, I was complaining that it was too long for me to go and just to go about it off. The two days that was left, but I just say, yeah, I'm mostly Sundays. I don't like taking it on Sunday because I have to wait till the 12. But working days, once I just close on the day, you will like two hours to your one hour. I will just think about that one. I have to sit at week, listen to gospel song over and over and over. I just think, I don't think it was any, I just where God does decide. To just have his VSTV and yes, obviously, so in the, you know, it's happen, got yes. the determines all this things, yes. Yeah. yeah, so let, let, let me ask you a side, a side issue, okay? Um, why, why do Healing Wings members not invite others to our fellowships? Why, you know, there's the generally people bring people to their fellowships, but uh, the Healing Wings people don't. They don't invite friends to fellowships. I don't know whether you have noticed that, and if you have, why is that? Why does that tend to be the case? What is responsible for the disinclination? I, I don't know. I don't know why. It will be almost okay. So, okay. Let me ask Mr. Adeleke. Maybe he knows. Mr. Adeleke. Why are why are healing wing members not inclined to invite others to fellowship? Well, even even me, I okay. Well, I think that uh, I think that they 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 we feel that the mess healing wings message is different from from other churches. Then because I remember one person that followed me to healing wings before. Then when after the service we go home, so we are talking. Say, ah, this is your message. It's not a uh, this one. This one one will not make it in life if you come to this service. You know why somebody start talking like that? You already and when you see the person down, try to see reasons, and it's just you have to leave the person because you know that healing wings. I uh, what I just noticed is that each and every person that comes there, it was God that brought them, one way or one way or the other. Somebody comes and hear the message and stay. It is God, you know. So maybe that's why people are not uh, bringing. I don't know. That's just what I I, okay. I think about right. this question every time. So, you know. All right. Uh, um, um, but who who is generally more responsible in the home? The father or the mother? Well, I, I think it's the mother. I think it's the mother that is generally more responsible because uh, yeah. because uh, a lot of the time, even if uh, the man who goes to work, you know, the the wife will have taken over everything, don't need necessary thing. Most especially the, the responsibility the man feel most of the time is okay, whether they need something in the house, they need the money, just drop the money. You know, drop the money, do buy, do whatever. Or do, but there are certain things that the woman, the woman take care of. For instance, the children. It is not more the, uh, uh, the practicality of uh, teaching those children relies on the woman. If we look at a child, eh, you look at a child, the kind of character that ch child exhibits. If we look at it very well, you will you discover that it's from the mother. It's from the mother because the father is a little bit far when it comes to when it comes to in, in, inside training. Training is it is that inside. an indictment? Is, is it is that an indictment on father on men that they tend to be 
too distant from their children relative to mothers. No, I don't. Or, I don't think it's an indictment. I don't think it's an indictment. Or, or is it? I, is it? You know, is it? Uh, because uh, Benzak sent me something that women are conspirators. They conspire against you with your children. They they make their your children like them rather than you because you are the one that we really disagree. They will say, "I will report you to Daddy, etc." You know, and then. When daddy beats you, they are the one who will pet you, etc. And you don't know that really they are they are making sure that the children prefer. Well, no, not not in all cases. It can it can happen like that when the man, let's say the man is walking somewhere and comes only in the night, or sometimes he goes one week, he's not around. We can that can, can happen. But if it's a man that goes to work and come back every day, okay. For for instance, let's look at the female. The, the 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 girl child in the house. The girl child they are, they are more closer to their father, more than more, more than their mother. So there was no, nothing the mother will tell the girl child that you understand. So that, that's one. Two is that we cannot we cannot say it's an indictment because there's a way this the structure. Maybe the way the man will have to go uh, go and walk and bring. He must be the one to 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 take responsibility of finances. Why the woman is the one that does the domestic and everything, you know. So, if it's like that, it means that the man we have a, a limited time in the house. Why the woman we have a longer time, which means that the domestic responsibility falls on the woman, you know. So, but if we if we just oppose both together, well, we can say. Maybe maybe forty to sixty. The woman takes sixty, while the man takes forty. That's where I. Can, uh... Okay, thank you. Uchiki, are you with us? Yes, sir. I was about to raise up my hand. <laughs> okay, what are you going to raise up your hand to say? God help me. All right, let's go. So, this is just what I want to say. In the position that Mister 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 Delicate shared. Um, when the man is working most of the time and the woman is raising the children most of the time, what happens is relationships are built with the identity of mother being more available than dad. So when children grow up, take for instance, when you go for college graduation and children are giving their college speeches or during the graduation party or some um even when people are just acknowledging accepting award there's always conversation conversations about i really want to thank my mother she was there for me she did this for me she did that for me she did this for me and that's because the society has identified the woman as the woman person that raises the children and the so members of the society have accepted it as the status quo, but it does not benefit the man at all. So I, my take on this is that men should get more involved in the children. It should not, uh, um, a woman's role as a helper is to support a man. She covers for where he is not able to be. So when he's working, she's there for him. But that time, that, that aspect should not take away from the relationship he builds with his children. Because what we're seeing is that these men work so hard and die early. And it does not benefit them. Okay, that's part of so, the question I was going to ask later. But anyway, yeah, go. <laughs> So, so I think we need to change the rhetoric or we need to change our way. It's not, it's, there's no, I know that the man is a gatherer, he's a hunter, he's a provider, but there was never a place where he said that the man should not have a relationship with his children. And if you look, that's why at a certain point when the children grow up and leave the house, there also is no relationship between the man and the woman because everybody is fitting into roles and not creating relationships as they go along. And so when push comes to shove, there's that empty nest period whereby the husband and wife are supposed to come together 
and continue their relationship. But no, it doesn't happen. So that's just my take on it. It's a little bit broader and longer, but just so I don't become too excited. Before you, before your, uh, what's the word, interjection, before your contribution, um, I had a question for you, which is that, um, uh, and these are general questions. I made that introduction before you came on live. Uh, women more amenable to let no, sorry, are women less amenable to joblessness in a man than a man is amenable to joblessness in the woman? The society has the based on society, women are not as amenable to joblessness of a man based on not just society, based on the way things are. Forget about the, way, the society. So I'm talking about the women. People in society. We are not having they, they are not, society. Okay. So women are not very attentive. For the most part. For the most part. Women Why are not? not very amenable. Why not? Um, because with finances come some certain degree of authority. And and with authority comes some certain degree of leadership. And so when all that is not happening in the right way women tend to become restless and then they tend to take over. Some of yeah, some women. So, so if that is the case, what if what if both of them are working, but the woman is making a lot more than the man? If it's in a family setting, it should not make any difference. What difference does it make that a woman is making more than a man? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean you know, the, the skill factors. I mean, you know, you say when the man is jobless, <laughs> The women are not inclined to accept it. So but why would know, she be inclined? Thing. Why would she, by the, by the same token, why would she be inclined to accept the situation where she is earning much more than the man? It's a contradiction in um, terms. If you... I I may misunderstand. I may be misunderstanding. So if she's a woman, is not inclined to accept the fact that she is earning more than the man. Is that what you're saying, sir? Yes. She, 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 well, she's going to have. I'm, 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 I'm raising as a question. I'm not. I'm not making a statement on my own. I'm saying okay. that. Uh, uh, is it true that, by the same token, you the question I asked you originally was, are women more amenable to a working husband than they are to a jobless husband? Okay, but given your answer. I then had to pivot to another one. Okay, so what if, you know, because you said authority lines and all these kind of things, what if the um the, the woman is earning twice what the man is earning? Uh, so would, would that would that not would that not also affect the authority structures? It should not. In 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 a in an ideal world, it shouldn't. It, in an ideal world, it shouldn't. And you know, yeah, but it, we are not, not talking about an ideal world. This discussion, this discussion is not about an ideal world. This discussion is about the real world. Okay, so in a real world, it also shouldn't, because if a woman is earning more than a man, then the question is, what are the roles in the home that are being less follow by the woman going to work every day and earning money? And if those roles in the home are being left follow. Is there somebody picking up on it? So if a woman is, there are some people that women, there are some families where women work and the man um, takes care of the home, right? But if, if that's the case, it also doesn't make, it doesn't also say that the woman should, because she's working, not get involved with the children at certain points in, the, in every day of their home, of their lives. So um, it's the same, it's the same, <laughs> Let me let me engage you a little bit further before I before I move on to Sam and Yemi see who have their hands up. Okay. Now you know the Nigerian equation is this: the man is working, the woman is a housewife. Okay, but the woman who is a housewife uh, has a maid, has some people, you know, relations of working for her. So exactly, um, how does that work? Why does she need so a cook? If, Why does she need a maid if her responsibility is the hope? So, you know, uh, and that's one of the 
where areas where I say um, Nigerian women are very, very blessed uh, because um, here, that's not the situation. You will wash your plates, you will do your laundry, and if whatever you can monetize, you monetize the rest, you're, you're responsible for it. And the, the degree of monetizing those helps, the, those support systems in the home is not... It's not readily available, like affordable like that. So most of it, you guys are sharing. So maybe that's where uh, most of it, you guys are sharing that responsibility. And maybe that's where some of my own uh, found, uh, my own background is coming from. But because I'm a Nigerian, I grew up in Nigeria, I understand the system. A woman that is that has a lot of support system in the house and is just being housewife, sitting in the house doing nothing, is living at a very, very under under utilized lifestyle because if she has all that support system then she should go out or spend time ex you know exploring other avenues of improving on her home improving on her finances improving on her marriage you know she should if she has support system if she has maids and all that taking care of her home then her husband it, it should be just about family growth family upliftment family you know it should be like a happy happy home situation thing as opposed to there being a lot of squabble because if that's if you have all that support system there's really not much going that you need if you have somebody taking care of children in the morning getting them ready for school um making cooking meals there's really not much so what are you doing in that you, time you, you, can, you, can be, you can be spending a lot of time on your hair, on your nails, and all kinds of other things. Um, well, well, <laughs> then on looking those good. things are not. Those things are not. Well, looking good. I like looking good. Looking good is good business. But to what extent you can monetize that looking good? There are many ways that you can, you, because your husband is a provider. You know, that's why that proverb that one woman describes a woman that goes out and is industrious. That's a very, that's a description of what we should be doing. Very industrious. We're looking for other business avenues. We're engaging on it because there's nothing constant in life. That your husband's uh, solid supply of income may dwindle out at some point. And that's where yeah. you as a woman, your function of being a helper comes that's up. Me. Okay, thank God. Uh, Samukwa. I hope you still remember what your initial intervention was because we, we took some time before coming to you. Yeah, I hope so too. Uh, let me first start with um, um, the part where Uche was talking about where a man might go out to work all day and comes back late and so on and so forth. And I... I beg to point out some some uh, uh, differences. For so many years, back in Lagos, my wife was going to work in the morning and coming back in the evening. And I was working from home because my studio was in the house. So I did have the opportunity to be with my children. Now, even that as it may, I had to deliberately begin to try to build a relationship between me and the children for this simple reason, that the way things work somehow naturally portrays the mother as the lover of the children while the father, apart from that, uh, 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 that part where you talked about Oh, the father being the disciplinarian that they will hand the children over to when uh, things go left. And then it's the mother that will now step out as the guardian angel who will now uh, um, make all things nice again. There is this part that the children, because, because the mother spends money on buying things for the children, and you know, as children, these are the things that they actually see and remember. Oh, mommy bought me a pair of shoes. Oh, mommy bought me a new dress. Oh, mommy bought me a, 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 a sneakers and this and that and that. And, and I discovered that this was the case even when all that time mommy bought me this, it was me who was giving mommy the money to go and buy these things for them. So it, it and then, you know, when they come back, 
sometimes she might remember to say, oh, thank your dad, but you won't give the money. But many times that didn't happen. So it got to a point where I, where at some point I decided that, okay, if there's shopping to be made from my pocket, okay, you guys get into the car. I'm going to, I'm, I'm taking you shopping. I go and buy it by myself and give it to them so that they know. <laughs> so they, they do not think that it is only mommy who is always buying things for them. But, and like I said, the, the men do the heavy lifting in the house, but these areas are not really of much uh, uh, concern to the children. So it is those other little, little things that they see mommy do that actually registers in their memory which is why if I have the opportunity, I am going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, okay, let's go, let's have a weekend vacation or something, the few times that we've been able to have it, you know? So in doing that, the children get to know that, okay, that is if they try small. And I now have to build, take time to one on one build relationships with my children for them to know that oh I do care about them and I do think about them and so so those are the little things they will see as uh, that is input because they are not they, it doesn't cross their minds as to the, as to how what, uh, the weight of school fees that daddy has to go to 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 to, to bring out from somewhere all those things don't don't cross their minds. The way okay, the, son, the, son, hold on, hold on. Let, let me let me make this point. Uh, the the what we are trying to do is to establish general premises so that uh, you might not actually conform to the general. Okay, so it will not be helpful. Um, Why do I need to teach you? I want to. Uh, can I please Wait. interject here, please? I was going to I, say I, that. I, I, don't, do I, I don't want a situation where everybody is presenting their position. No. Well, I'm, so I'm looking for I'm looking for general premises. Yeah. General I, 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 I was going to say that I, I was going to say that I do agree with Uche on the grounds that yes, fathers have to make an effort to, to create a relationship with the children. I, that with that I agree with that. You know, regardless of the circumstances. Yes, which is you if you want to introduce something before I call you MC. Yes, sir. I am very much in agreement with uh, uh, Mr. Sam as regards the fact that it is the responsibility of us women to remind our children that whatever we buy, whatever food we eat, whatever money we spend on you, daddy gave us the money to buy it. That, um, I think three, four years into my marriage, there was a lady that called me. If I mention her name, Ozema will recognize who she is. But this woman said, Uche, that whatever you do, make sure that your children know that the money is coming from your dad. And at that time, my husband, from their father, my husband was still in school and I was the one earning more. And so I took that, that advice. So it is our responsibility as well. And that's why... We really need wise women that have done this role well as you know, mothers in the house, mothers in Israel. Because she that I that it has kept me even until today. If the girls ask me, can we do this? Can we? I say, well, we have to go to daddy. If he gives us the money for it, wonderful. If he doesn't, all my credit cards are in my husband's name. First of all, more because I can I'm not very I, I'm learning healthy financial habits. But at the same time, I still always point them to their dad. So that's an indictment on we women if that's not happen, happening consistently. Thank you, sir. Okay, yeah, me see. I was going to say that it's a shame that there is a distinction between mommy and daddy's money. So <clears throat> I don't know whether that is whether that is the intention of anybody or whether this is just something that's happened because I mean I don't know um but my understanding was that money was supposed to be pooled so the children didn't think of um of, of this is my mom's money or this is my dad's money 
um uh so and again yeah, that but we're, we're talking about empirical money is generally not pulled you, you, you have, you're back to what you think should be the ideal situation which is next which is different from what exists so let me let me let me tell you something women don't generally pull their money with their men with the husband they don't they 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 are more inclined empirically to consider their husband's money to be theirs than to consider their their own money to be their husband's maybe that's so, because generally men have a lot more money than women do not necessarily it has, it has nothing to do with that uh you know i mean I've, I've had situations that i had to deal with okay one of them in fact the lady's late she, she was in our church she was making a lot more than her husband and they wanted to buy a house okay and initially they were going to buy it you know, 50 50 she came to me and they both are going to me and she said you know no way that initially in fact she felt that her husband should contribute 70 percent of the money to to buy the house but now our position is that her husband must be the one to buy the house not her and she, she was a lot richer than the husband okay so again <clears throat> right uh what i'm trying to determine is why the situation is as it is not idealistic positions that we might want to establish or what we think are really what should be the case because we know what should be the case the question is why is it wrong because if it is this way and we want to change it we, we can't change it unless we know why it is the way it is i think that women don't trust men you know um and i think that like a lot of things i, is I, 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 I found that that was the case sorry to interrupt you that was the case, for example, in the in the case I'm telling you about. Because when I probed the woman, uh, I discovered that her feeling is that this man might just decide to to marry another wife, yeah. to marry another wife or whatever it is, etc. You know, and then you know, I'm, I'm, I've contributed money to the, this, and then what's going to happen? So there is a certain amount of lack of trust that is built into that kind yeah. of uh, equation. I mean, not that women don't, which is, which is unfortunate, don't betray men, but it would seem that more men betray women. And because women, as we say, I have to agree that I find that in comparison to my male, um, uh, uh, um, what do you call them, colleagues, I, I, I earn less. I feel weak. I feel less able to plow on. Um, so I feel like I have less physical strength. So. Uh, I feel like the odds are kind of against me. And if if it is true that I might end up with my children, uh, if, for example, my husband decided he was going to marry a younger woman, then I would be at a, a much stronger disadvantage than a man would be. So I okay, think but, that this but, is kind but, of... Yeah. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this in terms of your relating that. One of my questions, you know, we, we haven't even gotten to a quarter of my questions for today. Maybe we we'll take it another time. Um, preserving this for a later listen. But I found that statistically, it is women that divorce men. Okay. Now, in in in, in the empiricism that I have that I have seen, eighty five percent of divorces in the United States are initiated by women, not by men. Yes. Okay. I agree. That I so, agree see, with. Situate it. Why is that the case, and how do you apply to your the position you just presented? Um. <clears throat> well, my, my understanding of it, and I know what I know the statistics because I've seen it, is that well, women are dealing with a lot of things in marriages that they don't face up to until maybe their kids leave, as Uchechi said. So, if, for example, you are with a very high earning gentleman. The likelihood is, and it, this is not all the case of men, because there are lots of good men who are faithful to their wives. But the likelihood is the man is has it has is outside of the house, and there are lots of things that are happening outside of the house that are out of the woman's control, and that can be happening for 10, 20, 25, 30 years, in which the woman might be talking a lot about it, and the man is not compelled because 
well, he's he's he has all the cards in his hands. So what you will also find is that they don't necessarily divorce the man now. Now they divorce him later. They divorce him after 20, 25 years, 30 years, by which time the man himself is is actually needs the presence of his wife. So the, the tables have turned and the woman feels like I, I I I don't want to do this. I don't want to I why would I stay with you? I mean, this is like it feels like you don't have a choice. That is why you are back in the home now, paying attention to me. So I think this these are the dynamics. And I think people don't now there seems people go to counseling for as long as possible, talk about these things. A lot of people are not dealing with the underlying issues. And I think women have a very long rope with men. And I'm not saying, and, and this sounds like men are not putting up with stuff with women. That's not true. But because men can distract themselves. You know, if, had if, if, if a man is unfaithful, yeah. okay, a, a woman is more likely to forgive than a man is likely to forgive an unfaithful woman. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Know. But women leave, I don't think that women, because I, I have sisters who say, look, I wouldn't leave a man if he was unfaithful. That doesn't make any sense to me. I don't really think that women leave men because they're unfaithful. I think they leave them for longer, deeper, more sort of sustained issues. Things like not, you know, like not listening to them, not talking to them, their mothers in their house, those kinds of, you know, little foxes that overrun the house, as opposed to the guy had an affair in 1985. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, but, but I think also, I, I don't know, I just feel like women just get, they put a lot in and they get very tired. But men can go out and they can cut off the house and think only about work. They have, they can compartmentalize their lives. So when they go out, they forget everything that's happening at home. So when they come back at home, they, they feel like, okay, oh, hello. um, You know, so, but women don't do that. They sort of carry the, this this relationship for years and years and years and then they're just tired but actually the reason why i raised my hand was because you made um, a mention about joblessness and I, I wanted to say men's joblessness is a very very different animal to women's joblessness and this is probably why women have a problem with jobless men because if a woman is is in quotes jobless and she's in the house she's not really jobless you know, but if a man is jobless, the likelihood is he's actually jobless, as in he's just sitting and watching TV until he gets a job that takes him out of the house. And not only that, because men are not very good at being jobless, they are also very cranky when they're jobless. So these are sort of things that, you know, people don't talk about um, because men don't do very well when they're not, when they don't have the spending power and everything there usually very very horrible to their wives until they find a job and they you know they feel like okay i'm a man again so yeah yes, the man doesn't have a job and then he is he's he's bad to his wife he's a stupid man well <laughs> he's dependent on his wife and then he's the one that is nasty again does that make any sense <laughs> i don't know about that yes uchechi Okay, yeah, yeah, you still with us. Your time is up. Okay, uh, go on. No, I'm here. I'm, it's a public holiday. You had your hand up earlier on. Your system working? I'm back. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I'm back. I think uh, the Wi-Fi dropped a bit. I'm back. Okay. I was saying that it's a public holiday and uh, we're home today, so I'm available, but I didn't okay. get your question. Memorial, memorial, day, whatever. Yes, sir. Put him yeah. in the trash. No, we don't need, okay. Okay, thank you. Yes, you have my full attention, sir. Okay, you had your hand up earlier on. But, you know, oh, it you was make... just to, it was to, um, uh, it, I've already, it was to add to um, what, um, I don't know if Mr. Sam was saying, I, I just wanted to say, and I already said about the fact that, um, you know, it's our responsibility to um, 
educate the children as women appropriately. But I also support Sister Yemis's notion that should there, it should be our money. It should be, it should it matter whose money it is. I mean, whose money, who owns the money, you know, is that... Uh, you, know, I mean, it, 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 you know, I mean, uh, uh, this is where the personalization might be a problem. Because, you know, from everything that I've gotten from you up to now, I think that you have a very responsible husband. Okay? Because um, a lot of women would be, would be loath to give their money to their husband because you think he might be spending it or might be spending it on other women, spending it recklessly. And, uh, you know, I mean, we buying studio and buying, you know, the, the toys for men rather than, you know, so you, you, you might not agree with the way that he spends. And um, it, it, men do a lot of uh, frivolous spending. Uh, we, we, we tend to think that women spend a lot because, you know, they do their nails, they do their hair, etc. But those things are not as expensive as the bulky things that men buy. You know, he decides to buy a Lamborghini instead of just a, a, a Honda. You understand? I mean, <laughs> um, there's a big difference in terms of pricing. So, uh, it, it, the, the trust element must be must be there for you to surrender your finances to your husband. Uh, I'm sorry. That, we that, have that, that, eighteen that, guitars. I beg your pardon. We have we have eighteen guitars in this house, and if we look at it very well, there may be one or two more in on Amazon about being shipped to the house. So yes, we shop. My husband shops. He can, he, the things that he likes, he shops, he, he can buy 10 of the same thing that he really, really likes. And I'm agreeing with you when you talk about um, men do buy toys. Some things I overlook. Some things, for the most part, I overlook. For the most part, I overlook. But I just wanted to say that I, <laughs> Alex used to, used to buy plenty. Yeah, I just wanted to add that. So I'm done. Okay, um, uh, Samukwa, you you you've been on the uh, on the queue for quite a while. I I I have a question I want to direct at the women folk in the on the platform, and that is, I I want to find out from their in their opinion. How likely do you think that women would regularly, on a monthly basis, give some money to their husbands in the period where he's out of work? So as, as a, a regular thing until he can get on his feet. How likely do you think? I, you I, think, it's, I think it's unusual to answer your question quickly. <laughs> could happen, <laughs> and even if the woman has been any very well, a lot more than the husband in in the past. I'm not I sure. I that, I'm, not I sure I'm not sure that. I'm not sure. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not sure that women are naturally wired to do that kind of thing on a regular basis. I think men are wired to do it on a regular basis. Give their wife some money regularly but a wife giving her husband money regularly because he's unemployed i don't think i, I don't think it can it can be sustained for for uh for even a short term rather than a medium term so what is the MSC's disagreement again it's, it's it comes it comes down to whether or not this money is considered our money because then it isn't a matter of me giving you money it's a matter they of are never considered <laughs> our money that's what i'm telling you a woman <laughs> does not consider her money to be our money as a general rule women don't consider their money to be our money that's what i'm saying we're talking generally now we're not talking here you see as a general rule 
a woman considers her money to be hers. You, you know, Mr. Okwe, can I just say something that I think might be a problem? You see, Uncle Femi said something that I agree with, which is that not only do men have bigger toys, they also have sort of bigger other responsibilities. So if, let's even leave this country because in this country, women can put their foot down for their husbands and say, this money, you cannot give your mother any money. You cannot give anybody any And the guy will say, oh, in Nigeria, the man is usually taking care of his extended family. So if the if a woman is going to give her husband money, she's going to have to understand that that money is going to be paying for a lot of things that she might not, in quote, agree with or feel that are the emergencies for their own units. So I think these are the things that cause problems. I don't, I don't, to be honest, though, I don't know a lot of women that actually have problems allowing their husbands access to whatever money and thinking, oh, this is our money. The issue is, as you said, they are big spenders and they have a they have uh, uh they have that confidence that they can they can get that money. So they 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 have a way that they think about the money that women <laughs> women don't think about women, women are afraid of all of this, you know. Uh, ways of spending that men spend money as a woman it's it terrifies me when i you know this idea you can just go out and just buy this expensive car i mean it's just beyond it's beyond me so um yeah, i would have a problem if you are you you are not working and uh and then the money is coming i say oh um my uncle in the village i be like eh. and then of course because you're a man i cannot tell you that i just have to say uh, yes sir you know so it's it's a very fine balance if, if a woman is, is taking money from a man and the man says, you are going to do your hair again, the woman is not going to say, oh, that's very rude. You can't talk to me like that. So you just, you understand? So the dynamics are so different that it makes it very, very dicey. Sorry, so please consider this situation. What of in a, in a scenario where right from time, even when the guy was working and was earning, he has never been a frivolous spender. He has always been sensible and many times actually discusses expenses with his wife before he he makes those expenses. So so you so you already know that he does not have a habit of frivolous spending. So in that kind of situation, what is the what is the fear based on? that would prevent a woman from thinking about uh, a man having access to her money if it is not a general principle as doctor it's, not, it's just not the convention that's it it's not it's not so much fear it's not, not, not the convention so for me, i think there's a lot of fear there i don't think it's a conventional thing i think there's a, not, i think, I know, think that's, that's, why, that's why I, that's why i give i give all kinds of strange examples like um a, 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 a husband doesn't generally lend money to his wife. But a woman would lend money to her husband, okay, and insist on being paid back. Okay? Whereas, you know, I mean, I'm just giving you an ex example now, you see, to tell you that the tendencies, the inclinations that you are trying to avoid, they are real. Okay? It's a psychological position. That well, is generally because, seen in women. Okay. Okay, yeah, even you, even you compared to even you compared to me, for example, you have more access to making money than I do. So women understand that look, if I give you the money that I have, it is easier for you to go and bring money than it is for me to bring money. So uh, <laughs> no, you cannot. Uh, uh, this, uh, that, 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 that's, that's apologetics. <laughs> you, you are the one. You, you are the you are the one that started with the premise that our uh, your uh, our money is our money. You know. So if our money is our money, why are you lending me money? I can't imagine a situation where I would lend my wife money. <laughs> you know. Okay. I'm not saying he's right to. I'm saying this. Oh. Like, I'm not saying this right. I'm saying this might be the reason why. This is the fear, the underlying fear. Okay, let yes, me hold on. Yeah, I'm the fear. I think that <laughs> the tendency goes, goes beyond the fear. 
<laughs> you know the funny thing in the matter, the woman will actually tell you that, please, she wants to borrow the money from you. She wants you to lend her the money. She will actually tell you that, but she never pays it back. In your case, yeah, well, better not make the mistake of saying she should just give you the money because because even if you ask her for the money and you didn't talk about borrowing it, by the time she's giving it to you, she will tell you straight, it's, this, is, uh, this is a loan. <laughs> uh, you know. Okay, uh, uh, Barnabas. Barnabas, good evening. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. <laughs> yes. Must the man find the woman uh, the scripture says, you know, if a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. Can can a woman find a man? I wish. Even though, yeah. So, do do women think... find the men, or do they wait to be found? I think they wait to be found. At least, to, from my little experience, I think. They wait to be found because even when um, they see somebody that might they might be interested in, they are always waiting for the person to come first. And sometimes I, that, that, I you don't think that is changing today. In this, you know, I mean, I don't know about the you you are the people in nearer to the Gen Z generation or whatever. Uh, are those reticences on the decline? Well, there might be, but I think it's still very, 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 very low. That's the, the pace of the decline is very, very low. Because, um, so doctor, we, we find, uh, just like you mentioned earlier, more women, right, praying to have husbands. I want to believe that it's very possible that in their life journey, they have seen one or two gentlemen that they might be interested in, but they never summoned the courage to, to take the first step, right? But if and a woman likes a man, are there no ways that she can uh, so, signal or whatever? Yes, so yes. That it happens a lot where you see the signal and but you know it, it's different from I think it's different from having to be very expressive about it. Yeah. And, and is it that they are afraid of rejection? <laughs> to be honest, Doctor, I don't really know what they are afraid of because I do say sometimes I wish the table would turn, even if it's for just one decade. Let's because I feel like it will create some kind of balance. I don't know if that balance it's it's will, will be we could create another problem or not, but I think it will create some kind of balance because but don't you don't um, you think that if, if the women will be taken advantage of if they approach a map and, you know, women are so irresponsible that, you know, okay, this woman likes me, I can take advantage of her and then run away. Something like that, that she is, uh, there is some kind of danger, quote unquote, on it, in, in that situation. So, I, f I think that that's, that's, one of the excuses that is out there generally, right? But if you ask me, there are women that are really strong-willed and they know what they want and they know how to get what they want, right? So same way the man will approach the woman and it doesn't happen that the woman will swindle him or something and run away. Eh, I think... But, but let, let, me, let, me, let me ask you a side question. As a last question, if the woman tries to find a man, would it not be inclined 
to drive the men away. They will think this woman is desperate, this woman is uh, irresponsible or whatever. I mean, would would men accept a situation where it is the woman that is after them and not them after the woman? Would they not read all kinds of... <clears throat> Yeah, meaning unfortunately, into... yes, the men will read a lot of meaning to it, and a lot of men will not uh, will not accept it, if I can use that word, right? I'm just thinking from my head the possibility that um, men and women will come to that point where we drop what society has fed into our head, and see it as a possibility of okay let's just go and get what we want right and let's see how it works because I feel like demand just is cheesy and sometimes a woman might not really feel maybe she's, she's pressured I don't know because I feel sometimes the issues that we have is uh, come across like okay after all i was not i just have to do this because i don't have time or my parents are my family has you know get married or something like that so that's the way i see but if it is a balance of anybody can can take the, the first step Okay, you are trying to you are trying to change you are, you are proposing changes to the situation, which is really outside of my <laughs> of of my point of view here. Okay, all right. Yeah, me see you had your hand up. I just wanted to ask that: what is the worst thing that can happen if a if a woman propositions a man and the man doesn't it, like her? He gets rejected, and the woman, you know, they say the hell hath no fury than the woman's gone. No, no, I don't, say, I don't, I don't, I don't think that. No. What is the worst thing that can happen if a man propositions a woman and she says, "Oh, I'm not interested," right? No, the, but, the man, the man doesn't care. He's used to getting rejected. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think that the the like you said, the possibility of abuse or or danger is higher for the woman. So, a, I mean, I know a Christian guy who decided that just because he wasn't interested in marrying a young lady, he had to sleep with her. Because he, because if he wanted to marry her, then he would have treated her better. I, I you know, so I, th I don't think that women are. I don't think that the, the, you know, even in this house of 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 Christ, Christians or you know, house of God that we say that we're in, that it is safe for women to express their liking to men. I don't honestly think that. Um, it's, I don't know. I, I just I would yeah, not recommend. Yeah, we, we, we have opened another Pandora's box. Then. Okay, so let me let me let me let me let me ask you this then. You know, mm. um, Jesus says that yes should be yes and I know should be no. Is a woman's yes yes? Um, it's a that's the that's the question that is over my pay grade. It's a very that general question. Your pay grade. There is no question <laughs> here. Your pay grade. How, you, just, you don't want to answer, answer the question. for the women? How, how do I answer for the women? As a general rule, are uh, women's yes, yes. Uh, there are no, no. Okay, sister, uh, actually, she's not up, please. Let me present it provocatively. Mm -hmm. My general understanding is that a woman's yes is not necessarily yes. Even in relationships, okay, between a husband and his wife, uh, so so and so, yes, okay, that doesn't mean yes, <laughs> no, that doesn't mean no. He's not telling you, <laughs> you have to determine what is it that she is really saying. And you know, later on, by the time the lover comes, but you said yes, yes, but you know that I meant no now, and you know that, you know, you know I mean, uh, <laughs> that's why I'm asking you. Yes, of women are not yes, and they are no, are not no. Ah, oh, Lord. 
I said, please save, save me. I'm going, I'm running away. Running away from where? Where are you running to? <laughs> you don't have to run. Man. You're all the way in London. We are talking to you here. Where will you run to again? My yes is always yes. So if I don't like a guy, eh? And he comes to me, I'll say, um, I don't no, think it's not, it's, it's not just, just in liking a guy, you know. You, you know, I mean, can we watch this film? Yes. Can we can we have pizza? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, but, but, but <laughs> you know, I mean, I, 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 I read a story of they were supposed to go to an Italian restaurant, but there was so much traffic on the way. And the man says, you know, look, I mean, by the time we get to the Italian restaurant, it will take so long, etc. Can we just stop by this pizza place and have the pizza? The man says, yes. So he went and bought the pizza. And then later on, it became an issue that, yes, we were supposed to go to the Italian restaurant. You took us to the pizza place. <laughs> ah, but I asked you, you said yes, yes. But, you know, I mean, this is the kind of uh, thing. Why is it that women's yes are not yes? You have to... Try and now second guess what is really the answer. Okay. Whereas when a man says yes, he means yes. Oh, okay, that's a very difficult question. Um uh, which his hand is up. Maybe she can help us. I, I don't, don't very much I, I don't yeah, have on. an answer, but but um, I think it was in 2007 or 2008, I visited Nigeria and um, I was at a practical Christianity meeting. And the, this conversation, we talked about this very conversation about your yes should be your yes and your no should be your no. And at that time, there was a young man that was asking me to marry him. So we were dating basically. Uh, but there were a couple of things that about him that I was not very comfortable about. And so I now stumbled on that practice. I did I stumble, but I, I was at that meeting and I left that meeting just in total confusion. Like, so should I, I'm not comfortable with him. And I already said yes to his marriage proposal. But I, I, from what I have seen so far in this, my visit, I don't think I can continue. Should you know, I went up to Bratribuzo and I said, because he was also at that practical Christianity meeting. And I said, Bratribuzo, I'm very confused because I, I I don't know. So Bratribuzo said, you know what? He said that this is, we did, it's, it's called practical Christianity. But right now we're doing practical life. That's quite silly. <laughs> the whole point of practical Christianity is to make it practical life. <laughs> So that was what I, I did say no eventually to him, but I, I remember I came out of that meeting so confused. So trying to be to please God, but at the same time, I knew that I was just going to, you know, do myself in if I continue in my yes with that guy. So I just wanted to share that. And okay, it's so amazing let, let, that let me make, it, let me make a statement. Let me make a statement that is uh that is, is somewhat cliche, but I can I can situate it somehow in scripture. When in doubt, don't. Yes, that's true. Okay, doubt is not is not a good framework for action. Okay, it it is not the basis of faith, because that which is not of faith is sin. It is not the basis for you know if you are not if you are if you doubt it, don't proceed. Don't proceed. Let, let me let me pose the question to 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 men. Uh, um, uh, um, uh, Mr. Delicate. Okay, why is it that women's yes, their yeses are not yes, and their noes are not noes? Well, I I, I think that uh, sometimes they want to they want to eat their cake and have it. <laughs> you know, they, they, they... <laughs> that, 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 because they, 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 the way I can put it is that uh, most of the time, they are not really sure. 
But they are looking at it that ah, this might be the last one, no? or they've been waiting, 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 you know. And one showed up. As he showed up, they are not sure. Of, okay, let's let's just give it a try, you know. Just like more or less like try and error, you know. I, 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 because they can easily be convinced. Maybe uh, maybe because of that, maybe because of their soft mind, you know, or because of I don't know. That just that just what I what I think. Okay, but Benedict, I, I I don't I don't know to what extent one can ask you some of these questions because you are not married. So I don't know how. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how how uh, uh, how familiar I, you are with 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 women. Okay. Um, I think I find yes or no for women. If they are not um interested in you or in someone, their yeah, yes is a no. Their yeah, yes is a no. Because they are not interested. So how will you know that how will you know which one is there? How do you know when they are saying yes? If they are yes, is they are no. If they are the ones saying yes to you, doctor, they will do everything for you. They will do everything to catch you. Uh, are women really inclined as a matter of strategy? They, they Hold on, no, let me finish. Let me finish the sentence. Let me finish my I'm sentence. <laughs> are they inclined <laughs> as a matter of protocol to say no before they say yes? I think um, if woman is telling a guy before the guy know what is happening, they will tell the person yes. But once they are not interested in you, you are the one disturbing. They will tell you no, and they know is no. They might be playing around with you sometimes. Doing whatever they want to do with you, but their no is no. I said they make up their mind. I got what I know about them. Until they are interested in you. In fact, before you say they are crossing, their yes is yes. You don't mind whatever you are doing at that moment because they have interest in you. Their yes is yes. I said you don't, you don't, you don't have interest in you. Okay, we've, we've, we've run out of time and uh, we have just gotten to the uh, the, the panel of uh, discussion here. So we might have to take it another time because I'm more my initial. Okay, let me let me hear from Sam before, before I say anything. Sam, yeah. I just wanted to, <laughs> to address your question in the way you asked it. Why is it that women's yes is not yes and their no is not no? The short answer to that is simple deniability. <laughs> That's all, you know. So the reason their yes is not <laughs> yes and their no is not is deniability, so that they can always they can always later tell you that no, that's not what they said. Uh, uh, yes. Mr. <laughs> <Deniability>. <laughs> God will forgive you. God will forgive you. It looks like it's not only God that forgive me, but we're going to forgive you. Well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Am I like so? True. See, see, see let me tell. Let me see. Let me let me try. You see, the thing is that. If you if a guy comes up to you and you really like the guy, and you say before he even says anything, you say yes, you say mm -mm, this man is easy. Come on, because this is another thing that okay, you say oh, women, women, women don't loan men money. Men don't, they don't 
The, if a woman is not posing for them, then her value, she's not high value. The most high value woman is the woman that is saying no to them. And women understand that at a fundamental level. So they will do small shakara for you people. So that no means, okay, let's see how interested you are. So, so, uh, so how do you know when she's doing the shakara and when it is not shakara uh, now? How do, you, yeah, how do you, God's know hand, you know so that you don't waste your time? <laughs> see, <laughs> no. What the woman wants, which is why most of the romantic movies you watch, eh? the woman will go to the airport. Then the man will go and meet her at the airport. If he does not go and meet her at that airport, I chase her um, I use taxi and leg and Okada to follow her to that airport. He's not serious. Which means she wants him to chase her and chase her and chase her and prove to her that he really, really, really wants her. So that noise, oh yeah, chase me more. Are you how is he, how, and how is he supposed to know whether she really wants him? How can he not know that? I beg. All the men that have come and gone. Know I did not leave no. notes for the men. I did not leave notes for the men. When she's saying no, how will you how will you know? Her body language will not say no. You know, oh when a woman God. likes you, her body she will she will be sending you some some signs, but she's not going body to use language. her mouth as Eh? Why can't she just tell the truth one time? No, Why and then I, do you like women that just agree for you? Tell what the, the truth. Wait, what is the truth Did one time? What is the one time? What's the one time truth? Eh? No, you see, the thing is this: this is in relation to a situation where maybe a man is going after a woman, but. Outside of this kind of situation, is there a reason why <laughs> no being uh, maybe not? And yes, being I'm not so sure why. Just why can't you just why can't you just so you see, that's the, the problem with women okay. is that they don't really they don't come out to say things, and men usually prefer to go straight to the point. All this rigmaroling going around and around in circles. Sometimes some people don't have the patience for it, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm even, I'm even saying that this is not, this does not only exist in the period of courtship; it also exists within a marriage. Exactly, within a marriage <laughs> itself. Um, do you want us to celebrate your birthday? No. <laughs> so <laughs> now, <laughs> now, you, know, you, you See, might make eh? you might make a very big mistake if you take that note. I mean, yeah, no. that's the problem because women are so not. Why did you say no? Because they want you to come back and say, "Are you sure? Are you sure you don't want us to do this birthday?" Okay, like Mr. Oh, said, you yeah. don't have time. Yeah. You don't have time for the rigmarole. Yeah. But the rigmarole. Yeah. Is what we women are invested in. You okay. otherwise, God, uh, please excuse me. You know there are all kinds of things happening outside. I don't want to, this is the Christian fellowship, but women are going to be women. Please, we're not men, so you have to do the rigmarole with us. You have to you have to cut <laughs> us. Even if you're married to us, you just come now and just say, you know, I know how men talk to themselves now because I have a lot of male friends. You just come now and say, uh, oh boy. Uh, we're not men, oh, please. You people should try. You <laughs> <Okay. laughs> should try. <laughs> I like that word. <laughs> so, Sam, you people should try. Okay? Uh, there, there were some yeah. really difficult questions that I have. I, I think I will reserve them for another time. We have, yeah. We've run out of time. Let us pray. Father, we, 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 we thank you. Uh, we thank you most especially because every time you demonstrate that you answer prayers. When we ask, we receive. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for that which you have enabled us to learn from one another tonight. We say, Lord God Almighty, let everything be down to your glory and to your glory alone. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And amen. Thank God, everybody. Amen. See you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.